Good morning. We are going for it. Shabbat Shalom. Everyone in here will make their way in as they can. Welcome to Shalom Macon, October 22nd. I'm not sure what the Hebrew date is. What is today? What's the Hebrew date? 17? Heshvan 17? You were right. So let's let's have some fun, guys. Let's sing some, uh, let's do some Hebrew and some country western messianic jived all in there together. How's that? Ready? Here we go. Oh, good, good, good. Yismechu b'malechu That means Let's praise and rejoice in our King. So why don't we do that, Lance? Ray, what do you think? I think it's good. Hey, Blake, I'm not using my ears. Give me a little more guitar. Darren, send Blake on an errand and then give me more guitar. Here we go, let's get this rhythm right. Now it's called Get Some Oxygen. So sing amongst yourselves. Shabbat Shalom, Besasom, Bimanea Yeshua. Shabbat Shalom, Besasom, Bimanea Yeshua. My, 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 hey, my, Besasom, my, 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 hey, my, Besasom, hey, 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 my, 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 Besasom, my, 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 Besasom. We do it faster, one more time, faster, Lance. Here we go. Ready? Come on. Ready? Shop in my Besasson, be my near Yeshua. Shop in my Besasson, be my near Yeshua. My, 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 hey, my Besasson, my, 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 hey, my Besasson, hey, 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 my, 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 my Besasson, my, 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 my Besasson. Country and Western. 
Western meets Messianic Judaism. Let's slow it down, right? Not that slow. Shabbat Shalom. Let's play a little uh, of our friend from Hudson, Wisconsin. Troy Mitchell. Some beautiful words from the Amidah that invite us back to our Father. Hashivenu Avinu. Return us, Father, to your Torah. Draw us near our King to serve you. And restore us to your presence. Even today on this beautiful day of Shabbat in complete repentance, bring us back before you. Shivenu 
avinu b'toratecha v'kavinu malkenu avodatecha v'cha.
sudden I am unaware of these afflictions he commits by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me His portion and he is our prize Drawn to repentance by the grace in his eyes The grace is an ocean we're all singing Heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss And my heart turns bodily inside of my chest Is moving on the water. <coughs> Who is holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the darkness with the burning light? Who is standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heaven? And the lover of my soul, Creator God, He is mercy. Great I am is only the Lord of all is a mighty The rose of Sharon is beauty Send the righteous sun is for me The mighty one who is coming Who is he that makes me happy 
she that gives me peace Who is he that brings me comfort Turns the bitter into sweet Who is stirring up my passion Who's rising up in me? Who is filling up my hunger? Sharing his beauty, send the righteous sun is for me, the mighty one who is coming. You are holy and eternal, and forever you will reign. Every knee will bow before you, never. Righteous Son, He is for me, the mighty one who is coming. May it be soon and in our day. Let's stand together. Yeah, la 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 la
You may be seated. Faithful God through the generations. We're learning about Abraham these days in the Torah portion. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Elohei Avoteinu Elohei Abraham Elohei Yitzchak Elohei Yaakov Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vehanora El El Yom Gomel Chasadim Tovim Vekonei Hakol Vizoher haste avod, who may be go a leave never nay hem le manche mo beahava Melecozel Moshia whom again Baruch ata Adonai magain Avraham. To the God who is faithful to resurrect the dead. Baruch Ata Adonai Mechayei HaMeiti To the Holy One seated above the heavens, the Holy One of Israel. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzvaot Baruch Ata Adonai HaEl HaKadosh To the God who gives us this day of rest, the Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai Mikadesh HaShabbat To the God, as we sang, who is restoring his presence through the coming one, Mashiach Yeshua. 
Baruch Ata Adonai HaMachazir Shechinato Letzion To the God worthy of all thanksgiving Baruch Ata Adonai HaTov Shimchal Ulchana Eleh Hodot And to the God who grants us peace Baruch Ata Adonai HaMvarech Et Amo Yisrael Ba'ashalom When you pray, do it like this. Avinu Shabbat Shamayim, Yid Kadesh Mecha, Tavo Malchutecha, Yeaser Tzonecha, Kasher Bashamayim Gamba Aretz, Ed Lach Menu Lemachar, Telanu Hayom. Umecholanu al chovoteinu ka asher mechalnu gamanachnu lechayaveinu yal tivienu lidei nisayom ki him tatileinu minara ki lecha hamam lecha Vehagevura, vehatiferet lehome olamimame. For the sake of our Master Yeshua and His merit and His virtue. May the sayings of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be favorable, be favorable, be favorable to you. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. You may be seated. That link right there tells you everything you need to know to be able to support Shalom Megan and the exciting things that we're doing locally and internationally even in terms as we're planning up next year, thinking about ways that we might be able to get some of you who live far away from us to come and spend some time next year at Shavuot or Sukkot or Hanukkah or something, but we're thinking Shavuot, letting the cat out of the bag. So we're doing good things, and your help, your support is a huge blessing. Shabbat Shalom, friends. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat, 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 Shabbat Shalom. Am Israel, Am Israel, Am Israel, Chai. Am Israel, Am Israel, Am Israel, Chai. 
Shalom and good morning. Welcome to Shalom Bacon. We are so delighted that you are here. If you are here in person, we just thank you for making the trek here. And if you're on live stream, we appreciate you uh, hanging out in your pajamas with us today. So anyway, we just thank you for taking time to come and worship with us as we have done such a wonderful job this morning. Thank you guys for, for that. Uh, just a couple announcements. Uh, First one is happy birthday to Jonah Turner and Anya Huckey. Yes, 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 yes. They're getting old and they will soon be able to drive, so go ahead and practice getting out of their way now. So, <laughs> and also, uh, today we have our Young Adults Weekend. Uh, it's ages 12 to 21, starting at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Lunch will be provided today and starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. and bring your own lunch tomorrow, guys. But we look forward to those of you who are gonna participate with that and those of you who are leading that, we just thank you for taking that time to do it. Uh, we have 761 YouTube subscribers. Please, please, please do what we can to help us reach our goal of 1,001 in 2021. So uh, talk to your friends and um, Press it on, you know, because, yeah, I mean, we've got lots of good stuff here that we learn week in and week out. So, and we, uh, speaking of YouTube, we just want to welcome Robin from India and Libby from Brazil for joining us today. We are excited that y'all are with us. India, India and Brazil. Yes. And Marlene from Trinidad. And Marlene from Trinidad. Oh, that's, we are making a worldwide impact, guys. So let's, let's. That, that is truly awesome to see what God is doing from little old Macon, Georgia. Anyway, Shabbat Shalom, and we are so delighted that you are here with us. Kiddos, let's go to Shabbat school. Next year, yeah. Yisim chalohim ke Ephraim v'chi Menashe. May God make you like Ephraim and Menashe. May He bless the works of your hands. Lots of boys, lots of boys. That's this is for the cowbell right here, right? There you go. <laughs> Yisamech Elohim, Kesara, Rivka, Rachel, Balea. May God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Father, bless our children, protect them, give their parents insight and wisdom. Guess what? It's the same prayer every single week, God, every single day, every single time. Bless them, protect them, help us raise them right. It is a difficult place to be raising children in the world. It probably always has been, but seems harder now. So give them, Father, protection. Fill them with the Ruach HaKodesh, that they won't be at it alone, and make them mighty for the kingdom. B'Shem Yeshua. Shalom. All right. You can go find your parents and go to class.
Hey guys, have um, do have Genesis 18 up if you can get to it in New American Standard Version. Down to down to the part where we get to Abraham's cheeseburger. We had a Darren and I had a had a he asked me for the title and we uh, I was inspired by the Holy Spirit <laughs> to call this week. Abraham's cheeseburger, which there's a conundrum in our Torah portion this week, which we're going to talk about. And I think, really, I never set out to do this, but I think I can successfully challenge, cause to disagree with me, or offend everyone in the room with the bit, and online, with the bit of teaching that I'm proposing for today. Uh, and maybe next week, because I don't think I can get to all of it, but it'll be better for you anyway. So my intention, of course, is always to teach. Like I want, I, we, we want to learn and provide application. But when we get into food for some reason, it really ruffles feathers. It really does. I mean, really does. And the truth is what we're talking about today is much, much bigger than food. It is about what we eat and why. Jews observant, non-observant, Gentiles Torah observant, non-Torah observant or not. It is about what the Torah says we can and cannot eat. It's about the Torah. It's about rabbinic law or halacha, which is the way we walk it out. But ultimately, at the absolute foundation is about applying the Bible to our lives today in the 21st century, because that's what we're here to actually do is to learn. These very ancient texts are God's word. They're full of wisdom, but we need to have something that we can do with it today. And that's a pretty big topic. So what we're going to do is let's, let's read some Torah first. How's that? You'll have it up there, but I'll read from here. This is from the Art Scroll Humash, Parsha Vayera. Uh, in beginning in Genesis 18. But first of all, before we do that, this is maybe one of the most power-packed Torah portions in the entire Bible. Okay, have, who's, who's, well, I won't make you raise your hand. Who has not read the Torah? No. Okay. Abraham's guests starts right away. Right away, Abraham's guests. Did God show up? Was God walking down the street? Did Abraham see God face to face? That's a question. Sodom and Gomorrah. Did Abraham argue and, and, and try to convince God of things with the omnipotent, all-powerful God? Did Abraham do that? Is Sodom's sin really about homosexuality or sodomy? Is that really what this is about? These are questions all found in the portion. Lot's volunteering to give his daughters to the people angry mob outside instead of the guests. That's a question. That needs some interesting uh, uh, explanation. Lot's wife turning back when told not to and turning to in all things a pillar of salt. That's strange. And of course... The conclusion of the Torah portion is one of the most monumental happenings in all of Judaism. The Akedah, the binding of Isaac, often mistranslated or misspoken as the sacrifice of Isaac. That didn't actually happen, so we couldn't call it a sacrifice. The binding of Isaac, a huge topic. What happened after is the question I always like to ask. We know what the conversation looked like going up the mountain. But what happened after? The psychology of a conversation between Abraham and Isaac after what happened at the top of that mountain must have been very interesting. And I would have loved to see their relational dynamic. But anyway, so much, so much we could talk about. Why a trivial consideration of Abraham's menu? Well, I'll tell you why. Hopefully, in the end of it, you'll really understand. Hashem, Adonai, appeared to him in the plains of Mamre. While he was sitting at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day, he lifted his eyes 
right? Vayera means appeared. He lifted his eyes and saw, and behold, three men, Shalosh Anashim, were standing over him. He perceived, so he ran toward them from the entrance of the tent and bowed toward the ground. And he said, my Lord, the word there is Adonai. It's not God's holy name. The word is Adonai. If I find favor in your eyes now, please pass not away from your servant. Just as a side note, three days ago before this, what had happened to Abraham? David, you're off limits. He was circumcised. So he's resting in the heat of the day as a 80 something year old man having just recently been circumcised. And these visitors appear and up jumps Abraham. What does tradition tell us? What's Judaism's perspective of Abraham? Man, this guy really liked to serve people to do that. Three days after a circumcision, you're not doing much when you're a grown man. But Abraham's up, you know, figuring out. Let me, let me bring some water. I'll wash your feet and recline beneath the tree. I'll fetch a morsel of bread that you may sustain yourselves. Then go on. Inasmuch as you have passed your servant's way. And they said, do it, dude. So Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, hurry. Three seahs of meal, fine flour, knead and make cakes. Then Abraham ran to the cattle. There's another interesting midrash. I could have you here all day with this Torah portion. One of those cattle got away. The choice calf, calf that he wanted got away. And you know where it ran? It ran into the cave of Machpelah. You know what the cave of Machpelah is? It's the cave where all the patriarchs are buried and the matriarchs. And you know why Abra Abraham bought the cave of Machpelah? Because that cow that ran away that he was chasing ran in there, and when he went in there, he smelled a unique scent. No, not cow, Gan Eden. He smelled paradise, and as he looked deep into the cave, he saw that there was the entrance originally to Gan Eden, to the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve were buried there. That's just fun. Anyway, back to the Torah, because you remember he paid a whole heck of a lot for the cave of Machpelah, right? It's like knowing that there's something there that the owner doesn't know and you'll pay whatever and they're like, okay, this guy's not very smart. Give me all your money. Little do they know. He's sitting at the door waiting to go in. All right. Sorry. Sorry. So where are we? Abraham ran to the cattle, took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the youth who hurried to prepare it. He took cream and milk and the calf which he had prepared and placed them before them. He stood over them beneath the tree and they ate. Stop! Hard stop. What just happened? What just happened? Observant Jews, for those who do not know. Observant Jews do not eat milk and meat together. It's in the Torah. It's in the Torah three times. It's in the Torah. Gentiles, observing a more strict kosher standard, do not eat milk and meat together. And yet, right before your ears... Avraham Avinu, our father Abraham, apparently served cheeseburgers to angels. Not literally. He took cream and milk and the calf he had prepared, literally made. We'll come back to that in a minute. But, 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 but that's not... That can't happen. That can't happen. Or it's not supposed to happen. Or is it? Wait. It, what? That can't happen, can it? Well, the answer is no, as we look a bit deeper. And, and, and very, very, as I said, you know, you'll notice, why is the, what is the relevance, first of all, for our culture, our community, you'll notice that shalom making functions never include milk and meat. We don't do that. Do you know why we don't do that? Because the Torah says three times, don't do it. 
Exodus 23, Exodus 34, Deuteronomy 14. And what's the very famous line that tells us we should not mix milk and meat? Who knows the scripture? In various translations, but you shall not do what? Or cook a what? A kid where? You shall not cook a kid in its mother's milk. To which the sages drew the following conclusions. Number one, because of the thrice repeated verse, that means three times. First of all, you shouldn't, you cannot cook it. Even if you don't intend to eat it, you can't cook it. Two, you cannot eat it, which is obvious. Number three, you cannot derive any benefit from the mixture of milk and meat, which means even if a stray dog comes to your door, you cannot feed that stray dog milk and meat. Why? Because it would warm your heart to serve a stray, which means you're deriving benefit from a prohibited mixture. Okay? That's what the sages of Israel say, that these three repetitions of you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. That's what that means. Okay? Now, it is probably safe to say that if that commandment is taken literally, every single person in this room and maybe in the city of Macon and the state of Georgia has probably never violated it. If we take that very, very literally, it is very unlikely that anyone has ever eaten a baby goat cooked in mother's milk, its own mother's milk. Unless something's really wrong with you and you're <laughs> sick and weird. But some Jews who choose not to observe the commandment see that as a reason why they don't have to worry about it. Because they take that commandment very, very literally. Okay, I'm eating a triple cheeseburger, but it's not a goat cooked in its mother's milk, so I'm fine. Okay, and by the way, should have said this at the top, there's no judgment. This isn't about somebody's standard or where they are. This is information. It's information. And you may, you may derive a conclusion. I hope you do. I hope I can eventually derive a conclusion for you. But um, this is just information. It is not, however, literal. And I'm giving you the orthodox, the very strict and ancient perspective on this. You ready? And there are dissenting opinions across streams of more liberal Judaism, that's for certain. But here are some unique things about these laws. Now, now this, is, this is interesting, okay? It's maybe a little bit boring, but it's interesting. Wait, no. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, sorry. The Torah prohibition applies to cooking, okay? The Torah's prohibition applies to cooking, which means that it is not prohibited to eat the mixture of cold meat and cold milk, according to the Torah. Okay? You with me? I should have made some slides. I'm sorry. It is, however, prohibited to eat cold meat and cold milk by rabbinic injunction. The rabbis prohibited that. The Torah, however, says cold meat and cold milk, okay, you can eat it because you didn't cook it. The rabbis came along and added, and we'll talk about rabbinic prescriptions, proscriptions in a minute. The term kid, not literal, does not mean a baby goat. A kid means a domesticated meat source. Something similar to a kid. A kid was a very generic and prevalent animal in the Middle East when the Torah was written. A kid is to be compared with cattle, sheets, sheep, sheep, <coughs> cattle's sheep, goat, sheep, goats. <laughs> and interesting to note, fowl or non-domesticated animals Fowl or non-domesticated animals, according to the Torah, do not fall within its restriction for milk and meat. Did you hear that? Fowl. <laughs> this is from the former Chabadnik. Uh, oh, I thought you said, I, I love it. I eat it all the time. Okay, good. So listen, 
Foul or non-domesticated, does not prohibited by the Torah. Foul and deer, according to Torah, could be cooked and eaten in this way of thinking. However, rabbinic law forbids it. Mother's milk, it does not literally mean that domesticated animal's mother's milk. Mother's milk indicates the same type of species, which is overarching explanation, a domesticated animal. You cannot cook a lamb in cow's milk or a calf in goat's milk. That is the milk that it's talking about. Mother's milk means domesticated animal, same general species, domesticated mom. That's what the Torah prohibits. However, the Torah does not prohibit, does not prohibit um, that you, you, a kid was cooked in the milk of a deer. The Torah says you can eat that. Wait, what did I say? A kid cooked in the milk of a deer. Yeah, I, I don't mean like your son or daughter. I mean a goat. <laughs> A goat cooked in the milk of a deer, non-domesticated. No Torah prohibition has been violated. Hmm. But the rabbis say yes. Now, for some very clear and exact communication, very clear. Does this mean then that for observant Jews, deer cheeseburgers or chicken cheddar clubs, no bacon please, are kosher? No. And here's why. The sages, the sages of Israel, ancient, you know, the practical application guys who were giving, this is how we walk out Torah, they came along with some clarifications. Chicken and deer are almost always referred to as what? Meat. Chicken and deer are forms of meat. That's often how you hear them called. Therefore, the sages prescribed eating these types of meat, fowl and non-domesticated animals with dairy as well. Why? Can you venture a guess as to why they did that? Steve and David are off limits. You're not allowed to be orthodox ever in your life and answer any of these questions. Why? Because it could be confusing. And I'll make this make sense so that it's not confusing. In their opinion, it would be easy for one to conclude that if I can eat a deer cheeseburger, which is meat and milk, and I see Chaim over here doing deer cheeseburgers, and I'm over here, if he's doing that, why can't I eat cow and cheese? Why can't I have a regular cheeseburger? It would be confusing and potentially could cause one to stumble. In other words, therefore, they built a fence. They enacted a law outside of a Torah law so that the Torah would not inadvertently be transgressed. You hear me? You understand what I'm saying? It's a fence around the Torah prohibition. For the same reason... They prohibited eating any milk and meat even if the two items were not cooked together. Why? The very same reason. If Laser over here sees, you know, Chava eating this and it looks like milk and meat even though there's, they weren't really cooked together, it all gets very confusing. So what did they do? They built fences around the laws. Now, Let's be clear, there, is, there are volumes of information in the library about kosher, milk and meat, and all of the different halakha, halakha and rules that surround it. I'm telling you the very, very basic things about this so that you understand them, okay? Because that's what you need to know right now. But so, so why did the rabbis do it? Well, here's one answer you, you'll hear. rabbis. Man-made traditions of men. Bad boys. Does that make any sense? 
that a group of men who love God, who study the word of God, who sit around thinking of ways to interpret it, that they would purposely just come up with ways to make your life miserable so you can't have a Chick-fil-A club? <laughs> Does that make any sense at all? We're talking millennia ago. Their job was to help Israel not violate the Torah. Why? Why does that matter? Because Israel stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and said, what you said to do, will do. So part of their job was to ensure that that didn't happen. It was not to ruin your life. It was to safeguard your life from violating the Torah. That's what those things are for. Now, the ones we described above, do not cook, eat, or derive benefit from a mixture. Those are the Torah things in the Torah about eating milk and meat. We got that clear? We safe on this? We understand? Good. Now, before we move away from fences, though, and before you say, yeah, fence, man, man, I don't like it. Still don't like it. Still don't like it. I want to remind you that we follow a rabbi who enacted fences. Many fences. The most well-known of fences is, you've heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. I tell you, don't even look. Now, somewhere, in some way, throughout the Proverbs and, the, and all over, if you really dig deep, of course the Torah is telling us this. But it doesn't come right out and say it. Yeshua is saying, I'm building a fence for you because I don't want you putting yourself even remotely close to the opportunity to commit adultery. Now, we're talking about chicken and cheese. It's a little different than sleeping with your neighbor's wife, right? But it's still Torah. And in their eyes and in their minds, it was their job. And according to the Torah, it was their job to protect the people from transgressing the Torah. Make sense? So we can't just immediately throw it all out and say it's rabbinic. Now, there is this clarification. I, I, there, there is such a thing as biblical kosher. There's an argument that goes, I eat, I, I eat biblically kosher, okay? Most people have absolutely no idea what that means. Most people think biblically kosher means I don't do any of that rabbi crap stuff. I don't do the man-made stuff. I eat biblically kosher, which means I don't eat pork and shellfish and turtles and rattlesnakes or bugs, Here, here is biblical kosher. You ready, you ready for biblical kosher? Everything I just said, well, no, because I just talked about rabbinic kosher. But everything I said about the three things and meat that's slaughtered in a humane and kosher way. Okay? Rabbinic, there is such a thing as rabbinic kosher, and we just talked about it, and I made that very, very clear to you. Not mixing fowl and cheese is a rabbinic fence. So one technically could say, I eat biblically kosher. If they don't eat cheeseburgers and the meat that they eat is kosher slaughtered, that's what biblical kosher means, mean, means right? With me? David, you agree with that? We'll talk after. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Okay, so it's, it's amazing to me that this was potentially going to be two parts, but it's not, there's no possible way. It's going to have to extend. Are you enjoying what we're learning? Does it have any relevance? Is it, is it worthwhile? Okay, good. Well, let me, let me do this. All of this brings us back to Abraham. And this beautiful slide that Darren created for us. He even chose, I think the black and the white cows are the, are the meat cows, right? No, they're meat cows. Darren, Darren, doggone it. Take it down. Redo it. 
Okay. <laughs> this all brings us back to Abraham, actually. Which, interestingly, this, this section of Torah... This section, 18.8, he took cream and milk and the calf which he had prepared and placed them before them. He stood over them beneath the tree and they ate. This section of Torah tends to offer one of the most widely used objections to the separation of milk and meat by all kinds of people. And why? Doesn't it make sense? Abraham? I mean, dude. Abraham's doing it. I have a very good friend who's a rabbi. He's a, he's a little more liberal than I am in terms of some of the things that he does, believes, doesn't do, whatever. But I remember sitting down and he had a big, big honking steak or cheeseburger or something. Oh, it was a, it was a big steak with blue cheese and butter all over it. Sounds good, right? And he looked at me and he said, Damien, you can eat this, you know. I said, yeah. He said, yeah, there's this guy, this really important guy. His name's Abraham. In our faith tradition, he's, of course, being sarcastic as can be to me. In our faith tradition, we call him Avraham Avinu. That means, like, he's a big deal. Abraham. He's like the father of multitudes, God's friend, you know. And one day, do you know what he did, Damien? He took milk and cream and put it all together with some calf that he found, and he served it to some angels. And you know what Avraham Avinu did? He ate it with the angels. So guess what, Damien? You can eat this steak. And besides... And besides, he said, it's all rabbinic, which is the usual exit strategy. We've already just talked about what is rabbinic and what's not, right? And I think that might actually be the only take-home point today is for us to understand what the actual kosher laws are. I promise you there's a lot more, but we're not going to do that today. Well... That's why I told you what was actually rabbinic, so that you'll have a response to that if someone ever wants to criticize you for the way you eat. Or don't eat. Just because it's rabbinic doesn't make it bad. Just ask Yeshua. Remember what Yeshua said about those nasty old dirty, ruin my life, take away my ch chicken club rabbis? Remember what he said? I'll tell you what he said. They sit in the seat of Moses. Do what they say. Just don't do what they do when they act like hypocrites. That's what he said. So, again, very clear. Not judgment. My parents and I differ greatly in our diet. We still love each other. And we eat. And I have nothing but respect for my parents. Or anyone else. Again, I'm telling you, information so that you process it through your own filter, right? <clears throat> and friend, here's, the, here's, here's today's collusion. Here's today's collusion. <laughs> Biblical kosher versus rabbinic kosher. That, that doesn't work. That can't work. That can't, be the, that can't be an out. But, my friends, me looking at that juicy steak with all that fat running out into the plate and butter and melted blue cheese on it and probably had garlic mashed potatoes with cheese bread and blue cheese gorgonzola pear walnut pecan salad with his blue cheese steak topped off with a cream cheese whipped cream cheesecake. It is no wonder, remember we talked about food at the very beginning, it is no wonder that people push up against things like this. Go to your favorite Mexican restaurant with me and Kelly and watch us look at the menu and here's how it is. 
Mmm. 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 Oh, wow, that looks good. Mmm. 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 And then this little teeny tiny space about that big in the back of a 40 page menu is what we can actually eat. Because everything else is everything else. Except in Israel, where you can walk into any restaurant and eat the most amazing food. Well, not any. Most restaurants. And on the sign, when you walk into the restaurant, there's a certification, which is a whole other story we won't get into. But there's a certification. And that, meat, that restaurant is either Basar meat or halav dairy. So everything in there, the meat restaurant, kosher, no dairy. They might even have a fake blue cheese that you can put on your steak with fake butter and you will feel like you're eating with my friend, the cheesecake rabbi. So listen, it's not hard to understand. And the truth is this is much, much harder than pork and shellfish much harder than pork and shellfish. That to me is easy. You know, I mean, I, I have a point about how hard it is, but, but this is where we're going to end. It does seem that Abraham violated the Torah. It seems as if Abraham violated the Torah. It's quite doubtful based on all that we've already discussed that Abraham had a deer milking farm. <laughs> which he was able to cold prepare the calf in the deer milk and serve it. It's very unlikely that that happened. I couldn't know for sure, but it's very unlikely. And it says, a calf, so it's a domesticated animal. So, so apparently, he served milk and meat together to the angels. But, but, Abraham, friend of God, friend of God, stated by Hashem himself, and furthermore, it is suggested in Jewish thought that Abraham was so holy and faith-filled and supernatural that he knew not just the yet-to-be-given Torah, but even the rabbinic prohibitions associated with said not-yet-given Torah. So, this means Abraham, according to Jewish tradition, was Torah before Torah was cool. So we have a difficulty in this verse and in this whole section, which unbeknownst to me, as I prepared, we will talk about next week as we move into the next phase of what does Judaism say about this and can we believe that? Shabbat Shalom. Let's stand together. Please do not, please do not text or email or post on Facebook you eating cheeseburgers after this message. <laughs> Even if they're cooked in deer milk, <coughs> deer milk. עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה ליוצר בראשית, שלא עשנו כי גויי הרצון, ולא שמענו כמשפחות האדמה, שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגור עלינו ככל המונם, ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים, לפני מלך מלכי המלכים, הקדוש ברוך הוא, שהוא נוטה שמיים ויוסר הארץ, ומושב יקרו בשמיים ממעל, ושכינת עוזו, ושכינת עוזו, בגובי מרומים, הוא אלוהינו אין עוד. 
Emet malkeinu efesulato, kakatu bitorato, viada tachayom, viada tachayom vehashevota, elevavecha ki Adonai hu Elohim. Bashamayim mimal, ve al haaretz, ve al haaretz, mi hitachatenu. Eino. Ve neemar, ve haya Adonai, le melech al kol haaretz. Vayom hahu, vayom hahu, yihye Adonai echad. Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo Echad, Ushemo Echad. On that day the Lord will be one, and His name will be one. <clears throat> that day is when we're all seated comfortably into the kingdom or the world to come. And there are little strains in Judaism that talk about in that day, even pigs will be kosher. I'm looking forward to that day, <laughs> if that's possible. Barbecue in the kingdom. We should have t-shirts made. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. B'Shem Yeshua. Yivarechech Adonai v'yishmarecha Yoer Adonai ponovelecha v'hunecha Yisa Adonai ponovelecha v'yasem lecha Shalom Shabbat Shalom, enjoy your lunch.